What is the crack? We were we been fucking hit. We we kind of this is kind of like a surprise one. We didn't even build this up or fuck all. To be honest, it's because we were busy as fuck. We this our on sound boys, yeah. We all good. Oops, oops. No little boppers on the screen, isn't there? No? What do you mean boppers? What the fuck? Know, is there wood whoops on the fucking screen, guys? Is that, can you hear us? Let us know. <laughs> Give us an L thumbs up if you can. If you can't, we'll just keep rocking on. We've got a confusion. Tommy, can you in. hear what we are saying? Give us an L thumbs up there. Jay says he's not seeing the boppers on the screen, whatever the fuck those are. <laughs> what you know the little thing. Oh, do we make you? Yeah. Oh, why? Kira, can you fucking hear what we're saying before we start this show with no sound? Because we did that only a week ago, didn't we? Yep. Was it last week or the week before? Yes, we're getting thumbs up. Okay, cool. Okay, yes, and let's keep rocking around. So what are we talking about today, Sean? Listen, 90% of trainers fail in year one, and this is the fact because they make less than 10 grand and can't move out of mom and dad's house. Yeah, that's pretty depressing, isn't it? It's not exactly fucking balling, is it? No, it's a, it, I suppose it's a sad state of affairs because a lot of those people that end up failing from a business standpoint could actually have been great trainers and really helped a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It's, a, it's a shame. And it's easy to fucking fix. I mean, most of you guys came through late and you are fucking good trainers or on your way to being good trainers. And like some people will say six weeks is enough to be a good trainer. And you six fucking years. I mean, you're not going to master anything. You got to continue working on that shit. Just like business and just like sales, it's the same thing. Business and fitness are very similar in a lot of ways. And uh, you're always going to be able to get 1% better at this shit. And we've got three tried and tested strategies for you here that you can implement today. So that you get fucking results from, from the word go. You should probably actually make that one number one. Okay. Yeah, so we, we've got to be shit here to keep us on track because we can't go off on the on tangent. Yeah. Now, there's quite a few of you guys rolling in here. Any questions on anything that we talk about today, get it into the chat box there because, look, we've got a scene, Robert Elliott. He's in Australia still at the minute. There could be a delay there. So get your fucking questions in now. Rob, are you still, have you finished surfing? How is your tan? You were looking very nicely tan. And it looked like you were having a good surf session that feature when you lucky bastard. But anyway, let's get rocking. Let's take number right. one, Jay. So you want me to hit it up? All right. So listen, guys. So the first thing um, that you want to think about is, you know, how it is your business set up. And what do I mean by that? If you think about it, you know, we train people and in return for us training them and getting them results and giving them a great experience, they give us money. It's just that simple. That's how we operate. But your business in many ways is a vehicle. It's a vehicle to get you what you want in life and to help people. And in return for that help, we get money. So if you were kind of think about your business like a vehicle, imagine, you know, I told you, listen, we're going to drive up a mountain or the side of a mountain. What would be the best vehicle? You might be saying to yourself, something like a fucking Land Rover. Sort of big fucking cars and wheels and shit. Yeah, yeah. something like Run a Land Rover, that type of thing. You know, four-wheel uh, drive. Four-wheel drive, lots of horsepower, torque, mm. all that jazz. Mm. But listen, a fucking Formula One car or a Ferrari would be no use for that whatsoever. Now, if I was to turn around and say, listen, we're going to put you on a flat road and we want to get you from point A to point B as quickly as possible. A Land Rover, a big, big ass Jeep is not going to be the way forward. It's going to be a Porsche, a Ferrari, something speedy. So what am I trying to get at here is, is that each of those vehicles is designed, it's built for the end goal in mind. What are the people going to do with it? So a lot of trainers start off and they just randomly fall into stuff. They don't actually think, well, listen, how am I going to set up my training? How am I going to set up my business model in order to get me what I want and in order to help people in the best way forward? So they end up just doing lots and lots of random things. And very often when people start dropping off things, you know, a few people, I remember uh, a while ago we were sitting down talking to one of the guys in Ascension and we started listing off his products that he sells. And most people kind of sell three or four things and maybe one would be best. But he sell three or four things. This guy was fucking going on and on and on. Me and Sean had about, I don't know, about eight to ten things yeah, on a sheet was. of paper. And it's like, he couldn't even fucking remember half the stuff that he'd done or he sold. So how the hell could somebody from the outside look at in? How the hell do you market? How do you tell people about ten things? You know, it's hard enough to communicate one thing effectively, never mind ten things. So I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that people make is in the initial setup of how they're going to get going. Mm -hmm. Is that what you want to add into that? Yeah, and, and that's a lot of people come to us for help because they're trying to make more money, right? Yeah, and they come to us and they think that sales and marketing, usually they want you know more help with sales and marketing, right? So uh, because people know, I, I'm 
love sales. I love fucking selling things. The only thing I like more than selling stuff is helping people sell. But sometimes the problem isn't sales. I thought you were going to say rude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Evidently not. No, I'm talking about sales. So like, usually people come to us for sales and marketing advice, but then when you look at it, I mean, the problem is something bigger. It's like, dude, all the sales and marketing advice in the world isn't gonna help you because you actually don't have the capacity in your business to allow you to make the money you, you wanna make. It's like, you, you do know your 90% capacity and the way you've laid out your product, your service, your offering, your experience, or the way you actually deliver your training, or the way your gym's set up, it's like, dude, there's too many things that are just wrong here. It's like a holy bucket, you know? Yes. It's not a holy bucket like we're fucking that Jesus is blessed or something like that. We made like a bucket with holes in it, right? So anything you put into that bucket, water, let's say, anything you put in there is going to be leaking out all over the place. And then what happens to a lot of people is, instead of plugging up the holes and fixing it, what they try and do is just fucking more water in it. And yeah. they just start working harder, 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 yeah. marketing harder, harder, yes. harder, yes. spending more, more, more. Yes. Looking online to fucking gurus that are going to give them some crazy ass system. I'll give you 30 blah, 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 clients blah. in one month. All that type of shit. And, you know, maybe they will get them 30 clients, but they're all going to fucking leak out because yes. there's holes all over the book. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You know? Gotham Chain, what about you, mate? So uh, th 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 that is the biggest thing. It's like, is this fucking thing actually set up to make the money you want to make? And do you know another reason I think that some people don't realize they're getting themselves into that position is because a lot of us trainers, look, we are in the training, we're passionate about training, we're passionate about helping people, and sometimes we just fall into this place where it's like your classes grow to size or you get a load of clients, and then, like, we, we've had people who just, they were working on a commercial gym, and the restrictions that were put up on them in the commercial gym just meant that they were like, fuck it, I can't go my business, I have to leave here, and they leave, so they, they leave, and then they go out, but it was more of a hobby, they got out because of the love of training. They love sharing that passion of fitness with other people, getting the results, and they're hobbyists. But when the, the moment you leave the security of that place that you're renting and you go out on your own, you're no longer a fucking hobbyist. You, know, you have to put your big boy pants on. And this is why conversations like, are you actually set up to make the money you want to make? Although it's not as sexy as, let me show you how to get 50 leads and let me give you a sales script that's close, fucking 50 grand. You know, that's sexy. But talking about the actual capacity of your business, and having some of these conversations that you need to have as a businessman now, fuck me, it's big boy pants on, let's talk about this shit. Otherwise, you know, you're gonna get yourself stuck in a trap that no marketing or sales can ever get you out of. Yeah. So guys, I mean, that is without doubt the most important thing uh, for many people. It's to pick the right vehicle that's going to be profitable, that's going to allow them uh, the type of lifestyle that they want to live training in the fitness industry. And if you get that wrong, I mean, you can change it at any time, but if you keep trying to put water into that holy bucket, you're fucked. Yeah, 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 because it's unscalable. Sometimes some businesses with the way they're set up are just completely unscalable. Yeah, it is in the business. So what have we got, Sean? That's number one. What have we got for number two? The next thing is a lot of people, and this happens today because look, there's social media is massive. It's a massive influence on our society, right? And it's, it's great, it's fantastic, but it's a double-edged sword. It's also fucking up a lot of people and getting them sidetracked and drifting away from the main thing and the main activity they should be doing and creating in their business, which is like, there is a conversation to be had about what do you actually want to be? Do you want to be popular? Because there's a lot of people who are following their favorite Instagram dude or their favorite social influencer, right? And they see them getting all this like and see them getting all these shares and all of this attention and they fall into the trap of being, I want to be like that, I want to have that attention. So they fall into the trap of trying to become popular instead of being profitable. So there's two different conversations I have here. I have to ask people all the time, look, do you just want to be profitable? Do you want to be popular? Like we get likes and shares and shit? Or do you want to put money in your fucking bank account? Because that's what I like to do. I like to show people how to get profitable. The, the fucking best marketing strategy you can have in your business is three words, sell something now, especially in the early stages. Because if you're trying to build a business to make you popular, you can go fucking broke. But if I build a business that's super, super profitable and by accident, I get popular, well, that's, I'm happy with that side effect, but I'm focused on the correct thing. Have I explained that right? Yeah, and, and again, look at pretty often, uh, the type of people that are the ones who really like your stuff online, you know, they're never gonna buy shit from you anyway. You know, you could be online and, you know, there's a handful of people, or if you're really popular, there's a shitload of people, and all those people, you know, they always like your stuff and comment on your stuff, but if you have a bricks and mortar business, where you you know you're gonna train people face to face. 
Well, the vast majority of those people are probably never going to come anywhere near your business. They live too far away. Yes. It just doesn't suit. Potentially, the price point that uh, you're offering and where they're at are totally different. So, I mean, that whole popularity thing is going to do fuck off for you. Yeah. And it's the other thing is we assume that the way they're doing their marketing works for us. Like, social influencers, most of them sell products online. If you've got a bricks and mortar gym, you're selling a service business. That means that, like Jay said there, you have a vicinity of maybe a couple of miles radius around you where people were going to be travel, are going to be prepared to travel to you to avail your services. And outside of that is a waste of your fucking time. So being, being fucking popular in Belfast when you run a gym in Dublin is fucking pointless. No matter how many likes and shares you get, I mean, your kids are not going to be able to eat likes and shares and you can't pay the fucking rent of the mortgage with likes and shares. No. Um, then the next sort of bit in this whole popular versus profitable conversation is like people are event focused. Like when you look at these social influencers and you look at them getting the, the success or the fame or the admiration or the adoration, it can be kind of like, oh fuck, I would like some of that too. But if you're not focusing on the process or even like successful business people, you're like, I'd love to have my own gym like X. And sometimes it looks like they're an overnight success. But really, they look like an overnight success because you just discovered them that day. Usually, these people have been putting 10 years of fucking graft into getting where they are. Like us, we're here, we, we didn't fucking just, you know, by accident fall into where we are in business now, where we run like three different companies in the business, in the fitness business. This happened over a 10 year fucking period. But for some people, they just discovered us today. I think, fuck, where'd they come from? It's like 10 years of process of doing the fucking work got us to here. If you've seen somebody who's really built or yoked in the gym, I mean, he didn't take like some fucking magic pill and get the gut in 12 weeks. I don't give a fuck what the ad said. <laughs> that didn't happen to gut, right? No, again, like even when we used to do kind of transformations at the gym, like honestly, the people who always got the best transformations were the people with the biggest training history. So somebody who had already been lifting for years and they already had a big, huge base. And then, you know, really what was happening is you're coming in and for 12 weeks, they were training like a fucking lunatic, you know, they were dieting and they were just able to really polish their physique. But it wasn't like an overnight success. Oh, I never lifted before and now look at me. That generally doesn't happen. I mean, some people come in fairly slim, you know, they shred them down and they look great in a photograph, but they didn't build a huge amount of strength or they didn't build huge muscles or anything like that. So again, people that were just focusing on the end result and they weren't looking at all the weeks, months, years beforehand uh, can get kind of a bit fucking, ooh, look at that. And then they're disappointed with the results, aren't they? Yeah. Because their expectations are way, way too high. That probably, that probably fucking nearly brings us into that, the next point, doesn't yeah. it? In terms of reverse engineering. So when you're kind of thinking, hey, listen, well, we always say to people is, you know, look at somebody that you that you deem successful in the fitness industry and say, listen, you, you're going to want to model or reverse engineer what they do, won't yes, you? Yes. And make sure they're not too far ahead of you. There's no point in picking fucking Russell Brunson, like, yeah. you know, you're starting a business because dude does, oh, fuck, he's heading towards 100 million, isn't he? Yeah. You know, he's way too far ahead. You need to pick somebody just far enough ahead where they're bringing you the next step on for you and your business. And then fall in love with doing the work. And, but don't underestimate the work that's going to be required. Yeah. So this are we on a goal focus and task oriented things here? Yeah. So I think that, that's what we're kind of saying there. It's like you know, pick pick whatever your goal is, and then you want to backtrack and reverse engineer it, don't you? Yeah. So this is kind of point number three. So how might you do that? Well, I remember the best time me and yeah. me and you went to this thing. A guy called Brad Tracy, who's one of the leading wealth coaches, and it fucking blew all of us away, right? We're in a room. There must have been about 50, 60 guys. All top end. It was maybe more actually. That was a big room, man. Was it? Yeah, Malahide, yeah, would have been, would have been. But look, this dude, if you've never heard of Brad Tracy, you should go look him up. He's he's been a motivational speaker, wealth coach since before Pussy was a cat, right? So he had this really effective way of reverse engineer production where he said, look, you've got to set goals for yourself. <clears throat> and this is again one of these parallels between fitness and business, where if you set goals for yourself in fitness, then you would write a program that's going to get you step by step closer to that goal it's closing the gap between where you are now and where you want to be and it's exactly the same in the business you've got to be able to write down goals because you have to decide what it is you want so you've got to decide exactly what you want and set goals for yourself you've got to write those down so once you've written them down then you've got to set a deadline 
Then from that, you've got your one thing, like this one main goal. You set a deadline for that main goal, and then you have to write a list of every single thing that you can do that would make that goal easier to achieve. So basically by writing goals for yourself, selecting the one thing, putting a deadline on that one thing, it'll have the biggest effect in your life, and then taking that one thing and dissecting it or reverse engineering that and all the things that you could possibly do to make that goal easier to achieve. And then think to yourself, like, what am I going to give priority to? And then that's the thing. That's the thing that you're going to have to do. Either, and maybe that thing has to be broken down, and you're going to you're going to complete it in a week, which is the, probably the best way to do it, isn't it? So then you, you're goal focused, but you're task oriented. So it's like this is my goal, but I've dissected it into these things, and I'm going to take three or one or one three tasks I'm going to complete in a week, and fucking nail those. And then measure yourself on your ability to do that, just like you would measure yourself in your program. You write your weights in and go, yes, I'm up on last week. I'm heading towards the numbers that I want to do. Yes, my body fat is down, yeah, or, or whatever the measurement is. Business is exactly the same. Just a lot of people are winging it and expecting these results like the people they see because, again, they're event-focused and not process-oriented. Yeah, big time. So if you do that and you're actually able to measure yourself, you're going to be able to see that you're closing gaps towards this thing that you said you want. And then obviously you're going – at a certain point in time, you've done all the tasks necessary and you've completed the goal. And it takes away that sort of – at the end of the day, this can kind of happen. You know, you finish the day and you're like, fuck, I was really busy today. Many times have you heard yourself say that, fuck me, that was a really busy day. But if you look at the stuff that you were busy doing, did it actually get you closer to your goal? Because if it hasn't, you've just been a busy fool. So the difference in busy people, there is a difference between busy people and productive people. The productive people are doing shit that's getting them closer to their goals. Busy people usually most of the time are fucking kidding themselves, spent a lot of time on social media doing fluffy bullshit work, right? So the, that's, a, that's a fucking major thing. The people who achieve shit have actually detailed plans. They've made plans, uh, sorry, they've made goals and they have plans, they accomplish them. So that's a huge fucking difference. Like you can't over overemphasize the importance of doing that shit because it's the only thing is going to keep you from drifting away from the work you need to do that's actually going to produce the results that you want and that's what's going to keep you in business yeah and i suppose look at if you if we were now trying to wrap this up all right yeah. trying to put this together really what questions. you want to think yeah if there's any questions hit them up there but what you're thinking to yourself is listen what's the vehicle what's your business model is it going to be profitable is it going to produce the type of lifestyle you want because again a lot of people are profitable but they're working like fucking 80 hours a week which is cool for a year or two or five years but it's not cool forever i mean you're only going to end up being burnt out yeah. as you get burnt out the quality that you deliver is yeah. going to be is going to drop out or it's going to reduce as that reduces you're going to start losing clients because the experience you're providing is not going to be as good Something as what it right. used to be all right so that's a fact yeah. after that then we want to be thinking about this thing of popular versus profitable and again, they all tie into each other. So it's like, are you, you know, just waving around and fucking, it, it's this kind of whole thing of, are you giving people exactly what they want or are you blending in what people want and what people need? All right? And within that then, are you focusing on the process or are you focusing on the event? So the event being, hey, I want 100 clients or I want to earn 100 grand. And a lot of people focus on that instead of focusing on what are the building blocks of the tasks that I need to do. And in order to know what they are, well, really what you've got to do is you've got to set yourself a goal. And again, keep that goal somewhat realistic. And if you can look at somebody who's in a similar position that you want to get to and model their success, basically reverse engineer it, break it down into the building blocks or the steps that need to happen, and then think to yourself, well, listen, what? how can I break down these big things into smaller little things, into smaller little chunks, into smaller little rocks that then what I'm going to do is take those rocks and I'm going to do this rock this month. And from that rock, I'm going to break it down into smaller little stones and I'm going to do those stones this week. And those stones, I'm going to break them down into pebbles and I'm going to do those pebbles this day. And think about, are you busy or are you productive? So, go, Sean, what's up next? What else? Dale, what, what, what have we got there? Dale, webinarization? Yeah, well, actually, I was just thinking that we've been working on something for a, a good while now that's very, very, very nearly finished. And it's incorporating all of these things and I suppose the combination of working with some of the top guys you've seen in Ascension lately over the last three years and helping them go from some of them were struggling with 14 hour days. And this might sound familiar to some of you guys. They wanted to earn more money, but the only way they were 
the only plan they had to do that was to actually work more hours until they ended up trapped in a business where they were working like 14 hour days. They wanted to have a busy, uh, a busy gym, buzzy gym, a busy gym, buzzy gym. Be pretty cool as well. <laughs> they wanted to have a busy gym and they wanted to be having the impact they could have. But somewhere along the line, they ended up trapped in the business and not having any of the freedom that the business should be giving them. So they didn't have time to actually enjoy the fruits of their labor with their family, their friends, or any people. So that's when they came to us for help. And we've we've realized that there's really three big rocks you need to hit so that you can actually use fitness as the tool to gain you the financial freedom that you want without having to work more hours and end up like fucking locked in the gym or you know doing shit you don't want to do or burnt out because that is genuinely what happens. 90% of the trainers do feel in year one. And most businesses, even if they make it past year one, struggle to make it past year five. So we're going to be sharing like the three big secrets you need if you want to use fitness as the tool to gain financial freedom. That means like you earn more money and maybe work less hours. You don't have to spend 14 hours in the gym. You shouldn't have to spend 14 hours in the gym to be able to do the things you want to do and still have an even bigger impact with the people that you can potentially help. So that's going to be a webinar coming up. We haven't actually set a date for it yet, but this is probably a, a, a good chance for us to ask. Since we've got like 90% of this webinar finished, if we were doing a webinar on like the three big rocks you need to hit, is there anything you guys would like us to teach you on a webinar where we can go in deep? I'm talking like we can go and give you the actual tools, the how-tos on a webinar. What would you guys like to see? So if you stick your comments in below, we'll have time to just tweak the last few bits of it to the stuff that is voted on most. Maybe we'll actually stick up a poll. Yeah. Makes you sense. Reckon? Yeah. Good. That's what we'll do. So look out for that webinar. It's coming up soon. There's no questions in there. I don't think. No. So we'll just we'll shoot. We're good. All right, guys, listen, again, if you're watching this back later, any questions, hit us up and we'll jump on and answer them. Peace out. Have a good weekend.